Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making Martha Washington candy. This recipe is at least 150 years old. Most people believe it probably doesn't go all the way back to Martha Washington, but it goes back to the Martha Washington Candy Company, which is around in the late 1800s through the early 1900s. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need three cups of sweetened coconut, four cups of powdered sugar, a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Now this is not evaporated milk. It's sweetened milk which has been cooked until most of the moisture is gone. So you have to have the sweetened condensed milk in this recipe. Two cups of pecans, a cup of butter, and a teaspoon of vanilla. Now what I have here is enough ingredients for half a batch because once we mix this up we have to put it in the refrigerator for at least an hour. So I wanted to do the video and show you how to do it all. So half of this is already in the refrigerator. But if you want to cut it down, you can certainly cut the recipe in half. And a half a can of that sweetened condensed milk is about two-thirds of a cup if you want to cut that in half. Now this is a chocolate dipped candy. And for all of my chocolate dipped candy, I usually use the semi-sweet chocolate chips and milk chocolate chips along with coconut oil. Now you need equal parts of the semi-sweet and the milk chocolate chips to make this. I have a cup of each and about two tablespoons of coconut oil. Now you don't have to do tempered chocolate to dip your candies in. This is much easier and you can melt it in the microwave. If you really want to go to a lot of trouble, you can drag out a double boiler and you can melt it in that. You can melt it in a pot on the stove. Just keep an eye on it. It's not that hard to melt chocolate without burning it. Just turn your stove out on low and stand there and stir it while it melts and it'll melt just fine on the stove. Or if you have one of these little crock pots here, uh, they sell these at all the stores, the dollar stores, Dollar Generals, and Walmart and stuff around Christmas time for like five or ten bucks. And these are really good for candy making because you can throw the chocolate chips and the coconut oil in here. When you first start making the candy and turn it on warm and just let it sit there and melt and it stays hot while you're making the candy. So you don't have to worry about it getting cold and then warming it back up so you can keep dipping your candy. So that's just a little candy making tip for you. Um, and if you want to give away handmade chocolates at Christmas, Valentine's Day, Easter, any of those holidays where people share gifts and share candy, hand dipped chocolates are a wonderful gift to give away. And if you have to purchase them, they sell for over 20 bucks a pound. So they really are a nice gift to give to somebody that maybe you don't know quite what to get them, but you still want to get them something nice, and you can make them yourself for far, far less than $20 a pound. Um, you can get stuff like these little tins at the Dollar Tree. Um, they have all different sizes of them, only a dollar. And they have them for all holidays, Easter, Valentine's Day, and Christmas. So you can pick up a tin and put them in a tin Walmart also has these cute little candy cups. Um, you can get them in white and they have them for all of the holiday seasons. And you can pick these up after the holiday. I think I paid 10 cents for these and there's 150 of them. But they're only a dollar or two before the holiday if you don't have them picked up. And you just want to put them in a, uh, if you have the mini muffin pans, you do want to put them in a mini muffin pan. And then once we dip our chocolate, we'll put it in here it makes it much easier. If you don't, you can just sit these on your cookie sheet and when you dip your chocolates, you can put them in it. It's just, they don't stay together quite as well. Um, you can decorate these with sprinkles. Now sprinkles are something else you can pick up cheap after the holidays and they're still good. I mean, these things have like a four year expiration date on them. So there's nothing wrong with going after the holidays and picking these up. And you can use little candy pieces even to decorate them. And I had some tiny little red and green sprinkles. I tore the kitchen apart and I cannot find them. But anyway, anything like that. 
And also, if you want to look back through some of the other handmade chocolate videos that I've done, you can melt a little bit of white chocolate and drizzle it on top or stripe the top with a little bit of white chocolate. It's really, really simple and, again, super cheap. So let's mix this up. Um, there's some variations that you can do on this, too. Martha Washington Candy has the pecans in it. Um, it's another southern recipe and if a recipe has pecans in it, it probably started in the south. I usually dump the dry stuff in and kind of give it a mix first. Um, but if you wanted to do some variations on this and you wanted to mix up a whole batch, you could leave the nuts out till last and instead of using pecans, you could use chopped almonds, you could use chopped walnuts, you know, divide up your batch and put part almonds and part walnuts and part pecans in it. We'll dump the pecans in. You do want a good stiff spoon for this. Um, this is definitely not a recipe for a, a flimsy spoon or one with a bad handle. A nice wide handle makes this easier. Okay, now I'm just going to dump the rest of this stuff in here. You can see how thick that milk is. Um, it's like a syrup. You can also um, toast these nuts in here if you want them toasted, which gives it a little bit of a different flavor. You just put them on a cookie sheet spread them out, put them in the oven on 250 for 15 minutes or so. That milk is extremely sticky too if you get it on your fingers. Don't forget your vanilla and if you're making real or if you're making candy at home I always use real vanilla. It's worth the difference in price. And I know this year it has gotten sky high, but it's still worth the difference. At this point, you're just going to do a lot of stirring until you get this really, really well mixed. And this is not an electric mixer recipe. If you try this in your electric mixer, you're going to fling powdered sugar all over your kitchen. And it's going to take much longer to clean up the mess from an electric mixer than it would to just mix it by hand. Okay, you want to make sure you get all the way down in the bottom of your bowl and you don't have any powdered sugar or coconut left in the bottom of your bowl that's dry and make sure you don't have any big lumps of coconut or powdered sugar left in the, the bowl. But this looks pretty good. This is about what we want. Now a full batch of this will make over 60 candies and so that's why I said you might want to cut this in half especially if you're making a lot of different kinds of candy. You can put it in the refrigerator now and then make the balls after it gets cold, but I think it's much easier if you scoop it out on a cookie sheet, put some wax paper or parchment paper on it so it doesn't stick, and a cookie scooper works great for this. You can use a spoon um, if you don't have a cookie scooper. But if you're going to make candy or cookies, I really recommend investing in one of these. It will save you a ton of time. And you just kind of press it together as you scoop it out. And it's much easier to do now while it's soft. Once it's been in the refrigerator for a while, you're not going to be able to even dig down. I mean, it's going to be really, really hard to dig down in here with this scoop and scoop it out. And like how we have all this little fuzzy stuff left on here, that's no big deal because when we take it out of the refrigerator, we can give it a little roll in our hand or even on the cookie sheet and smooth it out and it'll be fine. And like I said, it's much easier to do now while it's a little bit soft.
you don't really have to worry about these touching either because they won't stick together and even if they do a little bit it's not a big deal because we are going to have to smooth them out a little bit after they get um, cold. Okay, that is a half a batch. This is what they look like after they've been in the refrigerator for, I said, about an hour. You can see the butter has um, hardened back up. And you do want your butter soft in this, but you don't want it melted. If you melt your butter to make that easier to mix, you're going to have to put these in the refrigerator probably overnight. So don't completely melt your butter. Just sit it out and have it room temperature so you can mix it in. But once the butter gets hard and the um, condensed milk also sets up a little bit while it's in the refrigerator, they kind of have a shinier color to them. But this is how many a whole batch makes. And it's well over 60 candies. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, uh, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, gosh, 60, 65, 70 candies out of a batch. So you might want to cut it in half unless you're going to be giving a whole lot of these away. Or maybe you want to sell hand-dipped candy around uh, Valentine's Day or Christmas or even Easter. Selling hand-crafted is what they're calling, out, calling it now. Hand-crafted chocolates is a good way to make extra money around any holiday that involves chocolate. So this is a recipe that not everybody will have if you're considering starting a homemade candy business. So I'm going to put these in the refrigerator now and get them off the counter so I can dip them in a few minutes. Okay. Let's pull our chocolate over here. You do want to occasionally stir this while you've got it in your pot, but you don't have to like stand over it and guard it in one of these little crock pots if you use one of these to melt it in. Um, they clearance these after Christmas. They do Black Friday specials on them, so you can pick them up for next to nothing. And they do come in handy. It's also actually a crock pot, too, so you can use it to cook in, not just melt chocolate in. But if all you ever use it for is melting chocolate and you're making quite a bit of candy around the holidays, it does come in handy. Now, what this combination gives you is the coconut oil gives you a shine just like tempered chocolate. And when it cools, it hardens up very similar to tempered chocolate. So, I'm going to slide this out of the way. I said this is just a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips, a cup of milk chocolate chips, and the two tablespoons of coconut oil. These... I'm going to use these gold and white sprinkles here because it's close to Christmas and these make it really fancy. These would also be good for Valentine's Day if you wanted to make some fancy hand dipped chocolates to decorate your chocolates with. And if you're thinking about Valentine's Day, you can go pick some of these up after Christmas here. Now, if you're not putting these in the little muffin pan once you dip them or in the, you know, the candy cups, just have a piece of wax paper or parchment paper handy that you can let them drip on because you don't want them dripping on your countertop and you can put it on a cookie sheet so you can put them back in the refrigerator if you want to to harden them up. Now a lot of people use a toothpick to dip their candy. I use a fork because I've lost more than one candy down in my chocolate dip trying to use a toothpick and then you have to try and fish it out. By that time the candy starts to get soft because it's in the warm chocolate a fork works great. So just take your chocolates and smooth out some of those little rough spots. Drop it down in there, roll it over, fish it out, and let it drip a little bit, and then put it on your paper. We'll do a few and then we'll decorate them with sprinkles. Now, if you're going to use sprinkles, you have to work pretty quick here because your sprinkles won't stick to the candy once the chocolate gets soft. And you got to keep in mind that 
these have been in the refrigerator, so they're going to make this chocolate that you're dipping it in get hard pretty quick. So put our fork there, and let's get us out a few sprinkles. Oops. Now you don't want to overdo these because they will take away from the taste of the candy. If you're using these, you really are handcrafting chocolate. You just want to put a few on there. You can also decorate this with um, some of your coconut. Just save out a little bit of coconut and sprinkle a little bit of the coconut on here. You can decorate it with chopped nuts. Save out a few pecans and sprinkle some chopped pecans on top. But if you're using the shiny stuff, you want to do something more like that and actually place them. I want to get some of these a little bit smoother. To make them perfectly smooth, that's what you do. You roll them in your hands. And you can keep playing with it and get it perfectly round, but don't play with it until it gets warm because see what happens? It starts to stick to your hands. Oops. And then it starts to melt in your chocolate. <laughs> they are prettier if you take enough time to round them up a little bit. It really depends on what you're making these for. If you're making them to give away, you probably want to make them as pretty as possible. If you're making them because you've got a house full of kids that are going to devour them in two minutes, you might just want to get them done. And if you want to just get them done, just dip them just like that. No need to smooth them out. Um, sprinkle some nuts or some coconut or um, some sprinkles on them. And don't worry about placing individual sprinkles on them. And you can get, like I said, anything. I've got some big red and green ones here. You could use something like that and just put two or three of those on them, the red, green, and white. Or you can use this stuff here. And we can just put just a little bit of this gold glitter like on them. Now that's really pretty and fancy. Put a few in my little. I'm gonna put a few in my little um, candy cups here. Kind of be careful and slide it off in there. And you can um, do these, like I said, and then arrange them in a tin if you do them in the candy cups. Now you can also do them in the candy cups and sit them out on a tray at a dinner too. And it's really nice because people can pick it up and hold it without getting it on their fingers. Once these cool again, once the chocolate cools, it's not going to get on your fingers really bad because it does have that coconut oil in it. And it'll stay firm for a while, but it will melt if you hang on to it. You can use um, chocolate melting pieces to do this instead of the semi-sweet and milk chocolate if you like. Um, this would probably be better with a dark chocolate, but you could do dark chocolate or milk chocolate on these or do some of each and again that would give you more of a variety because a whole batch really does make a lot of candies and it would be good to have a little variety in there. And before my chocolate gets hard on these ones that I have in my candy cups, I'm going to take a minute and decorate some of them. And I'm going to do them with a few different sprinkles. I'm going to do some with some white. And you don't want to get carried away with these and make it taste, you know, like sprinkles instead of like coconut and pecans. And you can imagine how pretty these will be once they're put into a tin. And it would be a really, really nice gift. Now, ever so often, while you're dipping these, you do want to stir your chocolate. Like I said, because you've got it in the crock pot here. If you use a crock pot, you don't have to worry about taking it back to the microwave or taking it to the stove and melting it. 
Um, but if you melted your chocolate in the microwave, at, every so often you're going to have to stop and you're going to have to stick it back in the microwave for just a minute and remelt it because it is going to start to cool down and then it won't stick to your candy right and it'll lump up and be really, really thick. I'm already getting some lumps in this. You can take an eternity to decorate these, like we did these first few. But the cool thing about handcrafted chocolates is they don't have to be perfect because they're handcrafted. So you can get, do them a little faster. That's a lot of gold beads there. You can do these pretty fast if you're not making a video trying to explain how to do them. Um, just remember that you want to stop every four or five chocolates and add your sprinkles if you're doing sprinkles. Now, if you want to use um, the white chocolate and drizzle it on there or make, you know, circle it on. And like I said, I did that in some other videos. You can pull up some of the other dip chocolate videos I did. And you can see how to drizzle the white chocolate on there. If you want to do that, you need to put them in the refrigerator after you dip them in the chocolate and let the chocolate harden up. Because if you drizzle them with white chocolate while they're wet, it's just going to run together and it's not going to look good at all. So if you're doing some kind of sprinkle or the little beads or something like that, put those on while the chocolate's still hot. You want to make sure you keep them separated once they're dipped in chocolate because you don't want your chocolate touching and sticking together. If it does, it's not the end of the world, but they're prettier if it doesn't. They're also prettier if you take time to roll them out. I don't recommend dipping more than one in the chocolate at a time to speed things up because they start to melt before you can get them out of the chocolate. Now at this point you want to put these back in the refrigerator and let them firm up before you put them in a container to store them. You do want to store them in an airtight container. Now you can leave them sitting out you know during a party or when everybody comes over for Christmas dinner or something but to store them you need them in an airtight container in the refrigerator. You can also make them way ahead of time if you're going to have them for like maybe you want to do them for a New Year's Eve party and use all this gold on them and stuff. They would be great for that. You can make them ahead of time and freeze them. Make a big batch now at Christmas and then save half of them for New Year's. Um, anyways, these would go back in the fridge to get firm before you store them. And you do want to store them in the refrigerator. So, let's pull out the ones that we put in the little papers. Now, if you were doing this at home, you probably would want to let these sit in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes before you take them out of this um, little muffin pan. But I don't have 30 minutes. Yeah, that's still pretty runny there. I just want to show you what they look like. Because they're in the papers, I can put them in here and it'll be all right. They're not going to stick together because the papers will keep them separated. I'm probably going to give this tin here. As a matter of fact, I know, oops, I'm going to give this tin here to my mother-in-law for Christmas. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some truffles tonight too. And I'm going to do a layer of this and a layer of chocolate truffles. So she'll have a layer of the coconut and pecans, and then she'll have a layer of the chocolate. And you can see there how cute that is, and that would make a really great gift. And it's a nice gift. It doesn't cost you a fortune, but it looks like something that's worth a fortune. And it actually is worth a fortune. You're looking at about 20 bucks worth of handcrafted chocolates right there if you bought them. But you don't have nearly that much in them if you make them. And you can see it's super simple. You don't even have to have a stove. Um, you can melt your dipping chocolate in the microwave or you can melt it on the stove. It doesn't matter. It's nearly impossible to mess this up. 
You just want to make sure you leave them in the refrigerator till they firm up so that they don't melt when you dip them in the chocolate. If they're too soft when you put them in the chocolate, you won't be able to get them out as a ball. Handmade chocolates is a really personal and really special gift. Um, it's also a valuable gift, so don't sell yourself short if you're making people candy for Christmas instead of going out and buying Christmas gifts. There were a lot of years where that was all I did for Christmas gifts was I made people candy. But these are special, they're elegant, and they're personal. And while you're sharing gifts this Christmas, don't forget to share Jesus Christ with people because He is the greatest gift of all. Until next time, put God first. And don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. Thanks for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. Merry Christmas, y'all.